Chess friends, have you ever wondered why chess grandmasters are so powerful in chess? In this video, I'll unravel the mysteries behind their incredible proficiency, I will show you 5 things that grandmasters know but you don't. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler, so let's get started, Carlson started with e4, we have Sicilian defense, the Sicilian is a very rich theoretical opening because black can consider many variations, knight f3 and Magnus decided to play open Sicilian, knight f6 knight c3 and game converted into Nagedroff, this simple a6 move protects the knight entry square very well, this move also restricts light square bishop movement to this diagonal. Here Magnus breaks the opening with rook g1, this move contains a rich strategical plan, extending the kingside army to play long castle in queenside, another strategy is to build bishop structure in center and play bishop c5, the first thing is that grandmasters know when to stop following chess openings and develop their own strategy, so Alireza played h5, bishop g5 knight d7, Magnus could have played the queen e2 to move the king to a safe position by creating a pawn structure then potentially push the e pawn, where the rook will have the open file, then the knight f5 knight takes pawn can destroy you because the queen will get the open file on the e file, this is the chess strategy of stockfish level but Magnus is a 2900 elo rated bot so he played bishop c4, best move for Alireza is to play e6, blocking the bishop diagonal and preparing to play queen a5 b5, but he played g6 which is a mistake in my eyes, because this structure can be easily targeted by the f-pawn. It's time to start something new and trust the magic of beginnings, so queen d2, here if you give white two extra moves for example rook b8, then white will build his center successfully, rook b8 then e5 will come, so knight h7 knight e4, threatening to capture the pawn with a check, to win up the queen on d8, so after queen c7 rook e1, we will threatening to play knight takes check, to create a discover attack to the king and queen, and you can't capture the free bishop, because there is knight takes pawn. Takes and the file and the diagonal will be seized, so bishop g7 knight takes check king slides, bishop sacrifice, takes e6, to open up the file, queen takes knight then knight f5 check will destroy you. The second most important thing is that grandmasters analyze at least 3 to 10 moves in each chess move. This is why Ali Reza played bishop g7, we have castle queen c7, but the best move was to play queen a5 to pressure the bishop and play b5, bishop b3 and Magnus can play f4 in his next move, b5 rook e1 castle. We have f4 finally, you want to break the king side structure. Try not to become a man of success, rather become a man of value, Ali played knight c5 which is a mistake, best was to play knight b6 with the idea of playing knight c4 to target the queen, then b4, knight ups then eliminate the knight, since knight c5 doesn't promise anything so Magnus captured the knight first, black takes it with pawn but best was to capture it with bishop, because this move blocks the bishop diagonal, and this stupid hikaru structure can be easily targeted by the f pawn, which Magnus played in the game, black's best move here is to capture the bishop, because this light squared bishop is creating geometric problems for black, but Ali Reza played another mistake move king h7, what the heck. Is it difficult to understand the best move? He want to x-ray the king and queen so Magnus slides his king, bishop e7 to play rook a to e8 to pressure the pawn, we have knight d5, so Ali decided to do pieces exchanges, Magnus plays the pawn takes pawn first and takes the d5 to get great outpost for the knight, the third point is that grandmasters know how to create positional advantages by exchanging pieces and pawns, the knight is just a octopus knight, similar to Garry Kasparov's immortal game in the 90s. Queen f7 and Magnus strike in the king side with g4, this is coming so black has to take the pawn, rook e4 to target the pawn, f5 can't protect the pawn because of knight g5 fork, so Ali played bishop h6 first, to play f5, now knight g5 can't be possible but Magnus knows the most important thing in chess which I put in fourth place. When you find a good move look for better one, he knows it because he is a stockfish subscriber, so we have rook takes pawn, queen a7 to target the queen, but we have rook d4, here if you play any alternative move, let me show you the variation, then queen g3 will arrive with the idea of playing rook g4 queen g5, destroying the black position, rook g8 rook h4, g5 then knight takes check, king g7 knight e4 check, 
king backs queen takes check, queen blocks queen takes check. The position will be completely dead lost for you, the king will be exposed and do you know the fifth most important thing in chess. Hold on, I will tell you in last part of the video. Successful people do what unsuccessful people are not willing to do, don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. Queen e7 to target the queen, so queen h3, threatening to play rook h4 to target the bishop, the knight is doing very good job here, black can't defend his position at all, Ali tried to defend his position with queen f6, rook h4 g4, rook h5 to target the pawn, if you play an alternative move, let me show you the variation. Then after knight takes check rook g1, takes knight e6 check, king here rook takes bishop, your position will be completely dead lost, so back to the position we have g6, queen d3 to target the pawn, king g6 rook f1, threatening to take the pawn but, ops, Magnus sacrificed the rook, if you don't capture the rook and play in another move, then after knight check, king backs rook takes pawn, you will lose the queen, so back to the position, we have king takes rook. Rook takes takes takes, king backs queen check, king here h3, it will be a checkmate in a few moves, we have few windmill of checks, d6 queen check, d7 and that's it, this is unstoppable so Ali Reza resigned the game and wait, grandmasters are so strong at chess because they have the fifth thing, the fifth thing is that they love chess, they are passionate for chess, thus they constantly practice chess to become better players, these are five things that grandmasters have but an average player doesn't. So wish you all the best thanks for watching subscribe for more bye bye take care see you soon.